But for those with non-traditional gender identities, these signs can cause pain. Most of this ice, like this icicle you see right here, has melted away. I want you guys to take a look right now. We are preparing to drive across the Brent Spence Bridge, but just before two o'clock today, a serious accident happened. And you can still see the remaining evidence. This normal perspective that we're all used to seeing from the street level, the bird's eye view is what really comes in handy for investigators. The need for sidewalks as well as cars failing to yield at them were just some of the concerns submitted to the city's pedestrian safety survey. This is the good news, Tanya. Oh, good. Now we know a few days ago, Child Protective Services came in, reevaluate the home, and the adoption is well on its way. As you can tell, the winds out here are really picking up. And if you take a look, these hanging power lines are the results of those high winds. Kids can now enter into a virtual reality, and this is one exhibit you'll definitely want to see for yourself. Take a look at this design over here. It's a replica of the Woolworth building, and it stands even taller than me. Below freezing cold of 15 degrees makes for some pretty good snowmaking weather. And near the intersection of Dry Ridge Road, where Kentucky State Police say 19-year-old Logan Cooper was hit and killed by a car. He did find time to draw me this nine-year side cartoon that he completed literally in a matter of minutes. Pretty impressive. If you are going to be out here, you got to stay one of those. I got my hat on, I got my scarf on, I got my gloves. I'm probably going to throw this on now just to stay a little bit warmer. You He's sped off. Crashing into seven different parked cars, totaling at least two of them. He never stops. He just keeps going and goes around through the truck parking lot and just exit out this way. The city of Cincinnati is certainly no stranger to this gun control conversation. In fact, back in February, the council passed a resolution asking the state to ban the sale and purchase of certain assault and semi-automatic rifles. Now, at the time, Councilman Jeff Pastor was against this idea, calling it unconstitutional. Well, today he proposed his very own gun control proposal, and he's calling it the Keeping Cincinnati's Safe Act of 2018. It's time for us to change the conversation. And Cincinnati City Councilman Jeff Pastor is hoping this conversation could save lives. It all started when Pastor took a look at Cincinnati Municipal Code and noticed a red flag. Uh, with my staff, we researched it and we said, wow, this does not exist. Then he began drafting an ordinance to change that. His proposal would prevent any person convicted of menacing by stalking, domestic violence, or violating a protection order unable to legally carry a gun. This gun restriction would also apply to those diagnosed with a mental illness. This allows us to us legal gun owners to still maintain our weapons and and conceal carry permits, uh, but also putting a laser sharp focus on these bad guys and some of our brothers and sisters who have been diagnosed with a mental health issue with no fault of their own. Pastor adds he understands from personal reasons how gun violence can often complicate domestic violence situations. We then took his proposed motion to those at Women Helping Women who also know this battle best. When we're working with people filing protection orders like civil protection orders, that's something they can request that the respondents guns if they own guns, they'd be removed from the home. But that's not always something that happens. Domestic violence homicide reports show 66% of those cases in Hamilton County involve a person killed with the use of a gun. Yet still on the opposing side, some worry their Second Amendment right may be taken away, which furthers the gun safety debate. An issue that divides people, so it's hard to, those are issues where it's hard to make any movement. Um, so I think we're just excited locally that um, that people are caring and wanting to take steps. When everyone seems to be, you know, optimistic that this is something that, that is trending in the right direction. If you take a look along Sussex Avenue here in Mount Washington, you might notice something's missing. There's no sidewalks. So Madeline Gerker and her brother and sister who walk to and from school each day say they have to improvise. We usually walk uh, beside the street. And they also have to be aware of any speeding cars on top of dealing with the crumbling road. There are a bunch of cracks that uh, we sometimes, all three of us were tripping on. So this nine-year-old took things into her own hands, starting with a letter. Dear Mayor Cranley and City Council, I am writing to you because we need a sidewalk. In her message to City Council, she cites just a few of her safety concerns. A couple of months ago, my brother, Henry, almost got ran over by a bus. Madeline has even created her very own slogan, no sidewalk, no safety. Madeline's very mature for her age. We're very proud. I think she's very proud of herself that she, we're getting a chance to make this happen. 
Madeline's dad says for years the overall plan was to make the neighborhood more walkable, but so far he says not much has changed. A lot of people do recognize that kids are walking and slow down, but there's just as many that don't. They'll just get over farther to the side, but they don't slow down at all. Already, the city has allocated $500,000 for pedestrian improvement projects in dozens of Cincinnati neighborhoods. That includes projects like new crosswalks, adding flashing lights to existing crosswalks, as well as warning paddles like this. But in the case of sidewalks, some say there's still more work to be done. The neighborhood stretches much beyond here. There's all kinds of kids that walk to school, not just our family. Please help me get a sidewalk. Sincerely, Madeline Gerker. The emergency call comes in. A lot of debris coming down. And these Cincinnati firefighters are getting suited up. It's all part of a series of training sessions that help prepare them for the real deal. It's the worst case scenario training, but it's also routine training on what we should be doing all the time. That means following Mayday procedures, Anybody in there? improving decision making and communication for crews that are first on the scene, and pair that with plenty of repetition. It's good to run through all those scenarios beforehand so then your muscle memory kind of kicks in and a, a really chaotic scene becomes less chaotic. Similar to the chaotic scene that claimed the life of firefighter Daryl Gordon in March 2015. Following his death, the Cincinnati Fire Department took note of what went well. I want everybody out. We're going to defensive. And what could be improved. Training is how we're going to save our people. And if we can't save our people, we can't save others. But now with the help of a $1.3 million federal grant, this training specifically helps to better educate the top decision makers from fire officers, command and district chief staff. In many cases, these trainings build confidence by creating stressful situations like this additional smoke and live fire. Just like firefighters may encounter while trying to rescue one of their own or even a civilian during a fire. Okay, stay right there. Go through the scenario and then like, okay, I could have improved this, I could have said that, I could have shared this kind of information. Critical evaluations that in the end could be life-saving. Brianna Harper. Thank you guys so much. Nine on your side.